Hi, I'm Elgo Valovirta. And this time I'm checking out the Bugera 1960 in Finium. Yeah, Bugera 1960 F Infinium, a couple of bad notes there, but you know. I mean, it's like a hot rodded, modded plexi. I've never played with the Bugera amplifier before, and I must say that I'm really surprised, because this is like, it's pretty awesome. Like, come on, I don't know about the price, I guess these are quite a bit cheaper than, you know, your UK made Marshalls or, you know, what not, 5150s. I think they're made kind of like copies of their versions, but man, I mean, the price doesn't matter if, the, you know, quality is good. I mean, I don't know about the quality, I just got this from Musics, thanks again for letting me borrow this. I think the, these are made in somewhere, so, I mean, being on the road it would, you know, then you kind of notice and see what is the quality, but at least, like, yeah, I just plugged that in and started to play, and the song, I originally wrote that for 
Blue Guitars Amp 1 Iridium Mercury editions. I did a video about those and it, when I plugged this in I started to play that because somehow I felt this kind of, you know, Randy Rhodes, John Sykes kind of thing, you know, old Marshall, hot rodded plexi, you know, what, what Randy used. He, his plexi was muddied a bit. So I thought that, well, I revisit that and record that again. And I think it worked really well. What we have here is a, oh yeah, signal chain first. <laughs> this time, my one of my signature ESPs, this one with EMG5766, then to the pedal board, and I used Super Overdrive during the whole, whole, whole song. So that was on all the time, and that's it. And then I added a little bit delay to the mix when I mixed the song. And then I doubled the rhythm guitars after I filled myself. So there's, you know, two guitars panned hard left and right. And then when the solo comes, then it's just one guitar and stereo delay. Anyway, yeah, pedal board, KHG audio, amps selector, then into amps, back to KHG, to the sand rock reactive load. I'm using my signature IR Valo Virtuals from Jens Bugren. <laughs> Link in the description if you wanna check Bugren digital stuff out, strong recommendation. And use that link, you get a 10% discount. I get a small commission. From the sand rock, it goes to Steinberg audio interface. And I'm recording this to Cubase. My voice I'm recording with this small mic here. I think this is really smart design. Because, as you know, Plexi 4-holer. If you want to blend the channels, you kind of need to have a... Let me actually... You need to have a jumper cable. Like, let's say I will... I will uh, put a, to this high input, then it's volume 1 on Plexi. Then if I would like to use volume 2, I would need to jump the channels from 1 to 2. Then this will be active also. But with this one, it says here, parallel and then arrow there. So when I plug here, it's immediately connected. If I want to have just a channel 1, then I just turn this off. And then more, the more I turn this, let me actually show you. So, let's take the SD off. It's flexy. Then I can blend the bass channel without the need to jump the cables. And if I want to use only the kind of the channel to bass channel. Then it's this, and then th this doesn't work. So, it's a really cool way. You can jump the channels without a jumper cable. And then, what this does, this is a cascaded, like, a input. So, cascading means that the, the gain stages are cascading into each other, like on a modern high gain amps. You know, Soldano SLO 100, Boogie Mark 1, I, I think they were the kind of first cascaded amps that, that were the preamp section, you know, the tubes were cascaded. You, know, you can achieve high gain. And th this does that. So, putting here, it automatically cascades the two channels together. So they're not like separately blended like you do with this one like on a standard plexi but now they are like after each other so gas getting gain stage Lots of gain. I think how I had it. 
Yeah. I think they were around six. I, I didn't pay attention. So, yeah. And then it cleans up. can't really get a clean time with these settings because it's a pretty much a plexi. So this is really cool. Then when you put this into this low, mm -hmm. then it's just the... Oh yeah, then it's just a lower cascading stage. I think it was on the manual, I think it said like minus 6 dB. So this is a, like a also cascading, but like lower gain cascading. This is actually pretty cool. Let's try that with this SD. Maybe I had that on when I recorded, <laughs> I don't remember. Let's try to this one. I think I had that. It felt more familiar. So a little bit high gain, but not, not cranked. And your basic EQ controls. Presence, treble, middle, bass. Which don't do that much. I mean, yeah, they, they affect, but it's, it's like a plexi, so it's more like gonna you're shaping the kind of gain structure with them, so not radical changes. So you have to turn them quite radically to, you know, to get anything happen. <laughs> and then there's a post phase inverter master volume, which I have now on. It's full, but at the moment, but it's still quieter than it what it will be without. Let me show you. Because <laughs> this is a 150 watt amp, four EL34s. I think there were three, yeah, three 12AX7s, that's ECC83, like on a Black C800, and then four EL34s. But this is 150 watts, so the reactive load was kind of begging for mercy when I played with that, you know, because here were kind of the sweet spots and it was really loud and the, yeah, the, the sand rug was like, the fan was like, okay, I need to tame it down. So I put in the master volume, the post phase in where master volume, but still I have it on 10, but it's still, like you heard, it's, it's quite a bit quieter and, and uh, now I don't have to worry that is the reactive load gonna survive. <laughs> SD off. So it's this like a kind of like plexi wire. Let me actually compare, because what I have here, put this jumper cable back. I'll put a picture, you can see, because it's on the upper shell, shell here. I have a 1987X, 50 watt plexi. So first this one. Yeah, it's a plexi. And then the 980s and X Marshall. That's 50 watt, but it's <laughs> it's really loud too.
actually a little bit closer to JZM 800. Let's let me show you. So 800 without any overdrives. It's the Zach Wild signature, which is basically a 2203X reissued 800, but just with the Zach Wild Black Label Society graphics and 6550 power juice. Other than that, it's it's the same amp. <laughs> It's a bit quieter now because I need to use the master master volume there. It's like with the plexi, to a certain point these add volume and after that they they add gain. I mean, 800 is, is a bit modern, it has that like, you know, and let me show you 800 with SD. So first without... It's a plexi with master volume and like a cascaded preamp section, if you want. It's just British bite and it's absolutely like that. Conclusion, if you want to have a plexi and maybe Marshall is a out of your price range and you want to have a modded plexi, then this is, in my opinion, an awesome choice. And I, I think the, let me check the price. Yeah, here in Europe, uh, Switzerland, it's around a little bit under 500 uh, Swiss francs, which is approximately the same in euros, maybe a little bit less in euros and dollars. So, you know, a little bit under 500, <laughs> you know, 150 watt modded plexi, which is kind of in, in between, because uh, I've said this before, but I, if you want to have a martial plexi tone and behavior, only amp that does it, it's a martial plexi. It's very, very unique. But this is just another great take on of plexi. This is Bulgara Plexi. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting and informative. Until next time, take care. All the best. Bye.